still waiting for my ring light. I think it's coming this Christmas. Hey, BookTube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. This is uh, a, what is this? Oh, what was I, I was going to say it's a different backdrop. I'm sitting in front of my uh, slider in my dining room. Um, it just, I just got home from work and it was like, hey, that's a great spot I can film because of the light, even though it's, you know, getting close to 3.45, 4 in the afternoon. This is the best I got. This is the best I got. What is this video? This video is... Okay, again, I'm going to back up. One, two, three. Okay, okay. The point of this video is for the last few years, I have done an end of year, uh, the best four star reads of the year. So why do I even bother talking about the best four star reads? Because these, these are all great books. I rated them four stars on Goodreads, but you may find a book that you love that is for you a five star read or for you it, it a book makes you cry or it brings up all kinds of emotions. These are still books I really loved and I enjoyed reading. For me, they didn't evoke that emotional response, that gut reaction that I normally have to what I rate as a five star book. But these are still really good, and I would definitely recommend each and every one of them. So let me show you what I have. Um, 2021. Out of the books that I've read so far, I gave 49 books four stars on Goodreads. I have a pile of books. I think I have 12 altogether because I have two honorable mentions. I'll show you those first. And they are divided equally between fiction and nonfiction. So I have six fiction, six nonfiction. Let's go. My first one is nonfiction of my honorable mentions. And it's a book I'm currently listening to on audio. And it is Taste by Stanley Tucci. This is a joy to listen to because he narrates the book. It is all about food and his family's history with food. There are, I, I think what I'm going to have to do is go out and buy the hard copy because there are so many recipes that he narrates. And I listen to it in the car. I drive to work. I'm starving. I'm drooling. I am just fantasizing about food. <laughs> he talks about cocktails that he makes. It is, it is just an absolute joy. He, he shares with us his family history. He shares his current family. It's just, I, I'm loving it so far. And it's such a fun book to listen to on audio. Definitely recommend it. Um, my, my fiction, uh, honorable mention is Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. The, ooh, too, too, too close to the camera. This is a book that I read as a buddy read with Britta Bowler, and this is kind of a book, kind of a magical realism. Oh, and this is also translated um, by Tina Culver. Negar Javadi um, was born in Iran in 1969, and uh, she, her parents were intellectuals that opposed both the Shah and the Ayatollah Khomeini. And this is a kind of a family saga of 20th century Iran. It has to do with political upheaval and conflict, um, uh, revolution. They're, the parents in this book are revolutionary, political revolutionaries. It has to do with uh, emigration, immigration, um, family. Uh, it has, there's some discussion in here about gender and sexuality especially coming from an Iranian culture. This book is, is fantastic. And there's a lot of family legends, magical realism kind of things set back in the family history. It was great to read. Um, and I, I really enjoyed this book. I would highly recommend it, especially for women in translation or if you're looking for translated fiction. So those are my two honorable mentions. Now I'm gonna show you the nonfiction first. Um, again, these are all four-star rated books that I really loved and wanted to share. So the first nonfiction, number five, is called Ace by Angela Chen. And this is a book about asexuality. It is It encompasses all different uh, spectrums, all different 
levels. No, I, I don't like the word level because it, it seems like we're talking about severity, but it's not that. It's the differences between being asexual, aromantic, demisexual, and all of the different spectrums in between. It was so informative because it was information I didn't have. It was, there were I learned there were things I didn't know, and I thought it was fascinating. I would definitely recommend, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to stop saying that because I would recommend every single book in this video. Um, but I really enjoyed reading that book. It, it was illuminating for me, and I learned some things about myself too. So, uh, Number four is Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe. He wrote the book Say Nothing. I think it's Say Nothing, about um, a woman's disappearance in Northern Ireland. This one, Empire of Pain, is, is about the opioid crisis and the Sackler family and how pretty much our entire opioid crisis in this country can, can be traced back to the just obscene greed of the Sackler family and the advent of um, OxyContin. The book is infuriating because he has the best research. He provides so many details that I I could not understand how he got that deep with information. He talks about the entire Sackler family. Um, there's, they're still in the news. Uh, all of the court cases of them being sued and the company going bankrupt, their names, their name, the Sackler name is being re removed from uh, universities, from museums, and it talks all about the history of, of OxyContin, of opioid medication, of pills, how that led into people being addicted to heroin and fentanyl. It's a fascinating and infuriating book, and I highly recommend it. Um, I actually read it for my book group, my in real life book group, and a, a good friend of mine brought it as the selection, and I was a little skeptical, like, I don't know if I want to read that up. Uh, low amount of interest on my part. But by the time I was done, I was hooked and I was all in, fascinated, wanted to know more and have been really paying a good amount of attention to the Sackler family in the news. So excellent book. Let's see, number three, The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris. Oh, good gracious. I read this, um, I think, immediately at the beginning of Nonfiction November. Holy cow, is this interesting and gross and gory and gruesome. This is Joseph Lister's quest to transform the grisly world of Victorian medicine. Oh my goodness. It, if you have a sensitive stomach, do not buy this book. Do not read it, but uh, read it. Just read it anyway. It is so good. It is so interesting, so well written, very narrative nonfiction, talking about Joseph Lister and, and him detailing uh, Victorian surgery with and without anesthesia, pre-anesthesia and post. Talking about surgical infection. Infection was the biggest cause of death after surgery, not the surgery itself. The, um, the discovery of germ warfare and, and germs actually causing infection and bacteria. It is fascinating. It is such a good book. Um, there's some pretty gruesome parts where I was like, oh, I got to put the book down for a little bit. But it was it, it was so good. So good. Um, number two is another book I listened to on audio. And I just recently listened to this, Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. So good. So good on audio. He is a Scottish actor. Um, been in so many movies, Hollywood movies. And this is a book about his family legacy and his family dysfunction. He came from a childhood of abuse and cruelty at the hands of his father. And he grew up to want answers. There was a lot of family secrets. He talks about his childhood and his life leading up to uh, his adulthood and the choices he made in his career. The... This, the family secrets that followed him into adulthood, he narrates the memoir and it's just mesmerizing. His Scottish accent, I've really liked him as an actor for many years. And uh, when I started listening to this audio, the very first sentence grabs you and pulls you right in and I, I could not stop listening. It's an excellent audiobook, and um, 
it's I think I've said this before in my in my previous review. It's it's a memoir by a Hollywood actor that doesn't talk about Hollywood. He gives you different projects that he was working in basically to set the chronology to give you the the date and the context but other than that it's all about his family life his his emotions his thoughts the things that he went through and the the point where he comes to to understand how he survived his life and thrived through it so it's it's an excellent audiobook the number one nonfiction four-star book for me was These Truths by Jill Lepore. This is an entire big chunky history book of revisionist American history. I can't recommend this enough. I've actually recommended this to a few of my daughter's teachers. Uh, she has a very young history teacher who is so smart and so such an enthusiastic, compassionate person who loves to read nonfiction. And I said, have you read these truths? And I think at the time she was reading Barack Obama's um, first installment of his presidential memoirs. But this is exceptional and it brings to light so many facts that were missing from my American history education. So many things that I should have known and wanted to know. This, this book led me into looking at so many other books and so many sources of information of my own American history. Talks from the very beginning, pre-1600s, United, not United States, but America. I always do that. I always get those mixed up and it's the wrong time period. But it talks about Europe and what led to explorers discovering uh, America uh, pre-Columbus and the generations and centuries of slavery. And uh, it was just, again, and I use the word infuriating a lot, but infuriating, illuminating, educational, exceptionally well-written narrative, historical nonfiction. And I, I alternated between reading it and listening to it, and she, Jill Lepore, does narrate the book also excellent. So this is my number one four-star nonfiction of 2021. Now we've, we're on to fiction. These are five books that were my five favorite four-star fiction books for 2021. The first one is The Snake Pit by Mary Jane Ward. This, uh, again, here's another buddy read with Britta Bowler. Hmm, what does that say? Mary Jane Ward, um, uh, lived with mental illness and she had a nervous breakdown or what was called at the time a nervous breakdown in 1941. This is a fictionalized account of her experiences in a psychiatric institution, psychiatric hospitals, the different treatments that she was given or that she survived. Uh, they were pretty, I don't know, prehistoric in the 40s. So little known about mental illness, its causes and its, and its management. Um, but it's an exceptional book. It's an exceptional look at um, mental illness and mental patients and the things they had to endure. Okay, number four um, for the best four star novels of 2021 is The Silence of the White City by Eva Garcia Sáenz. And I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly. This is a murder mystery set in the city of Vitoria in Spain. And this is kind of a um, detective story. It's a, a partnership of detectives. The primary detective is Inspector Unai Lopez de Ayala, known as Kraken. And if you've watched Clash of the Titans, you know why that nickname is pretty cool. But these, these two detectives are tracking down a serial killer. And the primary suspect has been in prison for 20 years and is being released. And he is a twin. So they're trying to figure out, could he have orchestrated these killings from prison? Is Has he been involved all along? Is he the one who really did it? It goes back and forth in history to get the, the backstory of some of these characters and the family that led up to um, these the serial killer being discovered. It is exceptionally well written. Um, there's so much about Spanish architecture, food, relationships, and a great crime story. So that was so good. 
Um, number three is Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. I finally, finally, after many, many years of owning this book, finally read it. And this is Toni Morrison's first novel and uh, extremely well written, well done. Themes of racism and, and acceptance and abuse and family and just one of the best debut novels that I've ever read. And it's not really a surprise because it is Toni Morrison and she was the master at uh, the novel and the form. So this is um, published, it was published in 1970. And this is Picola Breedlove. She goes to a local kind of a, a quack, not even doctor, but a quack shaman, um, looking for a spell that will give her blue eyes. And it's a heartbreaking book, very recently banned in certain school systems. And I think this is one of the one of the more banned books in different school systems across the country, according to the American Library Association. So that was my number three. My number two is the first book in a mystery um, police crime series, and it's Attica Locke's Bluebird, Bluebird. This is the first book with Darren Matthews, who is a black Texas ranger, and it, it it's, it's just so good. And the story revolves around him investigating um, local murders and the source of clues and the kind of set in a small town in Texas, um, it's got a lot to do with the local residents, local politicians, the local wealthy residents versus the poor residents, family secrets, and some of his own secrets that he doesn't really want to get out. He's got um, some parental issues, um, addiction issues, relationship issues, but it's so well written. It's such a great mystery, such a great process, and she did just such a great job at character development and you really got to know these characters and you got to feel like you were there in these settings so good bluebird bluebird is the first one heaven my home is the second one and i think there's going to be another one coming out i'm hoping it's 2022 and my number one four star read for 2021 is the misremembered man by christina mckenna this was so sweet. This is kind of one of those cozy novels that I don't usually like, but I really loved this one. This is set in a small Irish town in 1974. Jamie McLoon is a county dairy farmer looking for a wife. And this was back in the day without the internet where they put personal ads in the newspaper. And so he puts a personal ad in the local paper um, the poor guy is dealing with um, family death and he's got a rundown house that's an absolute mess, doesn't really take care of himself very well, has a very good friend who's trying to set him up. They, he and his wife convince him to put an ad in the personals and a plot ensues. It also alternates between his story and um, Lydia who also puts an ad in the personals. And it's this is a, the type of a book that was hilarious to the point where I was laughing out loud. It is heartwarming, it is devastatingly sad, but at the very end, it's just, it's just one of those books that was so much fun to read and gave me all the feels and made me think that this would make a great romantic comedy. And I just love books set in small Irish villages anyway. So those are all of my favorite four-star books of 2021. Now, what you're, you may be asking, what do I, how do, what's the parameters to assign a book four stars? And some of them are when I finish a book and I say to myself, that was really good. I really enjoyed reading that. If the reading experience was a lot of fun. If I thought this is really great writing and I love this story, it's a lovely story. Um, it could be, if it's nonfiction, it could be very powerful like these truths or like the butchering art. If I finish the book and I'm still thinking about it or if I'm still thinking about it a week later, it's it's just a it's a four star book four stars there's that one missing fifth star is when a book evokes a visceral guttural reaction in me something very emotional very emotionally driven and moving so these books were great i for me they weren't 
in that five star category, but they're great books and I would recommend every single one of them. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you've read any of them already or if you're interested, and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody!